What's up everyone? I'm Pandora and I want to welcome you to Different Church's YouTube campus. Now before we get to the message, there's a couple of quick things that you can do in order to get connected here at Different Church. First off, subscribe and then tap that notification bell so you know when all the new sermons drop. Second, make us a part of your social media to stay up to date on all the happenings at Different Church. Last but not least, if you call Different Church home, visit our website at dfrnt.church. Click on the generosity tab and give so you can be a part of the vision here at Different Church. Now, wherever you're watching, we hope that God speaks a great word into your life. If you are in the 615 campus, if you're serving, welcome. Um, and one, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to everybody that showed up early. I know some of you are in the room now. If you're, if you're behind the, the tech booth, thank you uh, for being a part of Different Churches 615 campus. But I also want to say thank you to everybody that's on our YouTube campus. Uh, if you're watching and, 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 and hey, maybe you're creeping and you live in the 615 area and you're trying to figure out kind of what difference about and you were just kind of like oh I'll watch it one time see if maybe maybe you just need family maybe you need some friends wherever you're watching from if you're watching from your bathroom your car maybe you're on the treadmill or maybe you're at your house I don't know I don't know where you are but I pray that God would do something but like I said we're at the 615 campus and tonight is the vision night okay so we're casting vision of who we are what we're doing how we're doing it why we're doing it and in our vision because I'm not the smartest human being that's ever walked the face of the planet our vision I made really 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 simple okay it was go somewhere different do something different all in hopes that we can reach somebody uh, different but you know what I as I, as I was looking as I was thinking and praying over go and do and reach, I come to, come, to, come to find out I can't go somewhere if I don't know my different. I can't go different if I don't know what my different is. I can't do different if I don't know what my different is. And I definitely can't reach different if I don't know what my, what my different is. And so, and when I say, uh, uh, hold on. When I say different, you know what I mean? I mean weird. Like, what makes you weird? What makes you stand out? What makes you different? Um, and I know, and I know you're watching and you're probably saying, Pastor Tyler, I am not weird. Whatever ladies watching, my ladies that are watching, you mean to tell me that when, you, when you're in the bathroom and you're putting on your makeup and your playlist is playing and some Britney Spears comes on, you don't immediately create a music video right then. Yes, you, but you're behind closed doors, right? Fellas, you mean to tell me when you're wearing a shirt that fits just right and you kind of walk by the mirror and you see yourself and you go, still got it. You're weird, but... Nobody sees that part of you, right? Nobody sees that because you're behind closed doors. And what I've discovered in my life is we have this urge, this desire, this passion to fit in. If I can just fit in, everything will be golden. But what if God designed you differently so that you stand out. I mean, there are passages all over the Bible. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm God's masterpiece. Before 
He formed me in my mother's womb. He knew me. You were made different. But society, culture, ourselves tell us, be like me. I mean, granted, listen, I think the older we get, the more we desire to fit in. If you ask my daughters two years ago when they were one and two, you'd say, what do you want to be when you grow up? She'd say a cucumber. Whatever she liked, whatever she was looking at, she wanted to be that. But right when she got into school, hanging out in church, hanging out with the older kids, her, her answer started changing to what everyone else's. She wanted to be a doctor. She wanted to be a lawyer. She wanted to be a pastor like her, like her dad. She wanted to be Pastor Asher. But what if God called you to be different? And, that's, and, and, and this is my prayer for you. That within going somewhere different, doing something different, and reaching someone different, that you would discover. You know that, you know that not, that thing that keeps you up at night, that not right here. You're just like, man, I am built for something new. I'm built for something more than this. That's your different, dude. Whether you never visit the 615 campus and you just hang out, I'm fine with that. My prayer, though, is that you would discover who God made you. Not what your mom said you need to be, not what your dad, not what your family, your co -work. What did God make you to be like? But that's scary. Look, right when I go, okay, I'm a part of the group. I fit in. Right when you step out, people see you. And you enjoy hiding. You enjoy just fitting in. I'm with you. When I got into church, for 18 years, I didn't know one worship song. All I had listened to was hip-hop. I know more hip-hop than Hillsong, more Biggie than Bethel. And so when I got into church, I, they didn't mess with that. So I, man, I'll mess with that. And, 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 and I grew in that season, don't get me wrong, but I really think I removed the very thing that God wanted to use in me. My different, I said, I don't fit in, I'm going to fit in, and I've removed, if it's your past, you don't want to talk about it, you don't want to be about it, you don't want nobody to mention it. You're removing the very thing God created for you to use. He created this in you, he created this different in you, so that you can go somewhere, so that you can do something. And so that you can ultimately reach somebody that doesn't know the Savior that saved me over 10 years ago. That snatched me up like a grandma snatches someone up when they're doing something. He snatched me up. But you've got to know I am made different. And I'm okay with that. But... When you step out in that, and, 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 and here's the, you get insecure. You get me? You get insecure when you step out and, well, no one around me likes to dance. I grew up liking to dance, so I'm going to stop dancing. You've removed the very tool God wants to use in you to reach people. I know I'm not at no dance recital. You were built this way for a reason. Use it. Don't remove it. God wants to do something, but it breeds insecurity. I don't fit in. People look at me. People watch me. God's doing something in you. What, what, what is the passage that I think is in Matthew? He puts you on a hill, a light, to be seen, to be different, to stand out, to be weird. And I'm, as, I'm with you. I feel I spent years... Being like everyone else. And can I tell you, those seasons of my life, they were fun. I learned. I grew. God used me. 
But man, what could my impact have been on this world? And I don't know who you are, if you're in the room in the 615 campus, or maybe you're watching, you're made for more and you know it. And you know it. Yet, you're here. And that's my prayer. And, and the Bible's the Bible's about this. This is all this line by line, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, page by page. It is about God using different weird people to accomplish. Thank you. That's me. If you look, he never used the people that you would expect. He used the person that said, hey, here I am. Rahab was a prostitute. Here I am. And, and so if you have a Bible, we turn to Acts 3. Acts 3 and 4 are my favorite chapters in, in all of the Bible because I think that it speaks to Tyler. And I'm not saying that all the other chapters don't, but this, these two chapters, they're me. And so if you've ever watched like Netflix or anything before, you know, whenever you binge watch a season, you get to season two. The first episode of season two, what's the first 10 minutes? It recaps season one. It tells you last time on X, Y, Z. And so what I want to do is I just want to give you context. I want to give you season two, episode one. I'm going to give you the brief because we're not going to cover it all. And then we're going to go through the first three verses. So we had these two guys, these two dudes, Peter and John. And about two months ago, Jesus had left. They got filled with the Holy Spirit. Now they're walking around. They were fishermen, but now they've got this Holy Spirit. They've been spending time in their house. They've been meeting, growing, challenging each other, worshiping, going to the temple. And finally, they step out, and they start going to the temple, and there's this paralyzed guy on the road. And he looks at him, and he says, hey, do you have any money? And the famous passage, silver and gold we don't have, but what we do have we give you in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. And so he starts walking. And when he starts walking, the whole city erupts. Thousands of people, they come around to see who these guys are that did this miracle. And when they get up to these guys, and this is, this is, this is my favorite part, when they walk up to Peter and John, they look at him and says, there are three things they, rec they notice about them. One, Peter and John were ordinary men. They were ordinary. And really, we kind of know that they were fishermen. They're ordinary. Tyler, ordinary. I am as ordinary as it gets. And the second thing, it gets worse. And the second thing it says is they were ordinary men that didn't know the Bible really well. They had no, train, they had no special training in the scriptures. Have you ever been someone, like a coworker or a cousin, ask you, hey, what is this in the Bible? And you don't know it in the moment. And then, like, that night you're laying in bed and, like, one in the morning you realize what it is. And you're like, dang, I wish I would have known that eight hours ago. That's me. I don't remember the Bible like I should. I don't know the Bible like I should. I feel unequipped. But then there's the third thing. There were ordinary men. No special training in scriptures, but they recognized, they recognized that they had been with Jesus. I don't know how, maybe it was how they looked, how they dressed, how they talked, maybe how joyful they were, that'd be crazy, how funny they were. But they recognize, Tyler, I am as ordinary as it gets. I don't know the Bible as much as I should. I'm trying. But man, ten, over 10 years ago, I had an encounter, dude. Whoever you are, if you think, man, I can't walk into a church. I can't do that. God can't save me. I had an encounter. This person named Jesus. That's me. I'm reading this. I'm like, that's me. But they look at these guys and you know they've got to think, this? This? I think. Uh, 
Let's go to verse 1 of Acts 3, and I think we'll, we'll see why. Look at this. Acts 3, verse 1. We're really only going to read like six words. Peter and John went to the temple. You know who was at the temple? These, the people at the temple looked good. They knew how to pray really well. They knew the Bible really well. They would worship for hours. They'd walk in. They'd been fasting for days. And Peter and John, in their ordinary, smelling like fish, they decided to go to the temple. I hear so many people so often. They'll say, the enemy is closing doors in front of me. I don't know what God has next for me. He's stealing. He's killing. And I believe that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I think most of the time we're just insecure and don't step through the door God has for us. Because I'm ordinary. I don't know the Bible. I'm not good enough is this belief. But the question cannot be, am I good enough to walk through this? Because I'll tell you, I'll tell you a secret. You're not. Tyler's not. And you never will be. But your question has to be, who are you, God? And was the sacrifice over 2,000 years ago made by Jesus good enough? Was it good enough? Most people don't step out into the relationships God has for them because that girl's too good for me. This job, my resume is, I can't apply for this. I can't step out into ministry. You want me to start preaching? I can't do that. I can't volunteer. I can't even walk into the church. I'm not good enough. But Peter and John, and they're not good enough, said this is the door God has for us. We're going to go to the temple. We're going to go. Even if they recognize, I'm ordinary. I smell like fish. I don't know the Bible. You know what I've seen? It's easier to look like the temple than be the temple. It is easier to raise your hands. And and, hey, if, 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 if you're watching and you've been in church and you've been a believer for a long time, hear me. If the church people that you rock with really knew you're different, you've been hiding it just to fit in. And that will only get you so far. You'll only accomplish their calling for them. You won't accomplish your calling that God put in your heart because you're, you look like the temple. But Peter and John, I'll get there in a second. God has created you, 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 for something so big, something so different. But it takes the I'm not good enough attitude, the I'm different attitude to step into God's done it in your life. He did it 2,000 years ago. You're straight. But the insecurity creeps in. You know, I, I, uh, you ever look back on old seasons of your life and say, here, I'll give you an example. I'll put myself on blast, okay? I'll put myself on blast. If you've been married for any amount of time, you probably have a bunch of pictures on your wall, on your refrigerator, all of that. You know those pictures you don't like? You know that photo shoot that you had that you don't like, but your wife or your husband just keeps putting them up? I've got... So here's this picture, right? I I hate this... When I look at it, I don't recognize this guy. That's not me. I didn't dress like that. I remember my mentality. I didn't think like that. I didn't talk like that. That's not me. And that's true. It's not me. 
And if you look back at those pictures that you go, I don't remember that person. You probably looked a lot like the people you were around. It wasn't you. You were creating this facade. You weren't embracing. You're different. And you look like everyone else did at that time. It's very easy to look like the temple. It's hard to be the temple, to walk in your different, to walk in your calling, to say, I don't care what people think about me. But look, look, Peter and John went to the temple. They stepped out of their insecurities. They stepped out of their doubts because you know they heard it. If people recognize them as ordinary, that has to mean they recognize other people as extraordinary. There was a bar to reach, and they didn't reach it. So Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the three o'clock prayer service. And, and here's the third, the main, the third main character in this movie. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth. All he's known is struggle. So we've got two people that couldn't be more opposite. We've got these prophets that are leading. They're being the leaders God's called them to be. And then you've got this lame guy. I'm both of these people. I know that God has put something in my heart. I know that God's put something in my life. I know that I've got something that God wants to do in my life. But I also, there are some days, if I'm going to be real, if I'm going to be different, if I'm going to tell you, there's some days I just wake up depressed. I just wake up angry. And some of you, just like this guy, have all you've known is struggle. This says from birth. You've been angry since you can remember. You've been in abusive relationships since you can remember. You've struggled with stress and anxiety since you can remember. You've been a cheater since you can remember. All you've known is struggle. But in your lame, there is this leader that God wants to birth in you. There is this person that God wants to use in you. But I think that... Right after this, right, look, look, look. as they approach the temple, a man who has struggled his whole life. The next four words was being carried in. He was being, when you struggle, you bank on others to carry you to your next. And, and, and I think carry, being carried would be kind of cool, honestly. Why? You don't have to do it. You're dependent on someone else to take you. Every single morning, this guy woke up and said, who's going to take me to my next destination? Who's going to take me to the temple? So you grab this leg, you grab this arm, you grab this leg, you grab this arm. His whole life was being carried. And the thing, some people would rather be carried than cured. Some people would rather just say, you can carry me. Whoever you are, whoever's been struggling and you're watching this, whoever you are, you have been banking on that relationship to carry you to your next goal. You've been waiting on the right job. You've been waiting on the right position. God wants to cure you. He doesn't just want to carry you from season to season to season. He wants to cure you. So now you are carrying and moving people. But that's scary. Listen to me. And you know who you are. That's scary. Because now, just like you relied on others, you would also put the excuse on others. Not anymore. Your excuses are done. Rather than saying, who's going to carry me? You've got to say, I've got to get up and do something about this. 
You're no longer reliant on people. Now you are reliant on this person named Jesus to pick you up, to scoop you up, and to cure whatever's going. You've been married for a while, and you're waiting for the right spouse to make you happy. It's not going to happen, bro. There's got to be something in here. Sweetheart, I know you want some dude to come in and sweep you off your feet and tell you how beautiful. Your insecurities will come back. But there has to be this moment where you say, Jesus, I'm done being carried from job to job to spouse to spouse. Done. Change whatever's inside of me. But that takes you to break down your pride and say, I'm different. You've got to be real with yourself. And I pray at the end of this that you would just come to this realization that, man, I have been carried my whole life. I have struggled my whole life. But God wants to cure you. He wants to make you well. And look what happens. Look, we go back to the other guys. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried uh, in each day. He was put beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate. This is an ugly situation in a beautiful place. So he could beg from the people going into the temple. Look at this, verse 3. When he saw Peter and John. Now I'm back to the church people for a second. If you're watching this, you've uh, you've been a believer for a while. When was the last time somebody that was broken really saw you? Like, really ask, what's your story, dude? What's your story? When was the last time? Because you know rabbis, Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, church, they walked by and he probably didn't feel like he could approach them. But Peter and John, listen to this, in their ordinary, and they're not knowing the scriptures, and they're smelling like fish. He saw them and said, I'm going to approach them. And that's a challenge for me. Pastor Tyler, when was the last time someone in their brokenness, while you looked really good, they didn't feel good, they felt like they could approach you and say, I need help. And whoever you are, I know I was talking about somebody that's lame, but some of you really look like leaders and feel like leaders. But when you've been faking it your whole life, If I was a gambling man, I'd probably say, you don't get approached very often. And Peter and John walk to this temple, and this lame man looks at them. They see him. And later on in the passage, it says that they looked, they gazed intently at each other. They they, they related on a level. Because they remember when they were there. But you've never exposed yourself to allow people to see who you really are. You've been in hiding. No one knows that you're different. No one knows that you're weird. No one knows that you stand out. It says, when he saw Peter and John about to enter, and then this is where we're we're gonna be done. Two words. Two words change this man's life. It says, when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked. Two words changed his whole life. He asked. When was the last time, for real, whoever you are, when was the last time you really just got down on your hands and knees and went, God, I need something. I don't know if you've ever asked for money before. That's the most humbling experience you'll ever have. He asked. Those two words changed his life forever. You know, uh, my daughters are, are four and six, and we teach them. When adults are talking, if you want to get our attention, you walk up to us and you say, excuse me, hey, dad, excuse me, dad, excuse me, excuse me, dad. So Ryan and I will be driving in the car, 
And as we're driving, me and Ryan will be talking, music's playing. We'll be talking, and we'll hear in the back, I'll hear in the back, excuse me, Dad. Excuse me, Dad. But when I don't, because I'm trying to finish this conversation, she gets louder. Excuse me, Dad. Excuse me, Dad. She knows I'm in the car. She knows I'm driving the car. She trusts where we're going. She just needs my attention. When was the last time your prayer got the attention of God? When? Because you've got to think, if the temple is an outside courtyard, people are walking, it's loud, this lame guy's got to be on the road going, hey, hey. But that urgency, that excuse me, is the very thing that led to his breakthrough. That's the last thing you do. That's the last way you respond. Here's my prayer. For two people, I just kind of wrote it down as I was reading this passage. One, maybe you're the believer, maybe you're the Christian that has been so ineffective for the last few years because you just look like everybody else. You hate looking at old photos because it's not you, but if they knew what your marriage was like, if they knew it where you really worked, if they knew how you really talked, if they knew what you watched, they'd judge me. But you're, I'm done with the fake smiles. I'm done with that. I want to walk in my different. I want to walk in my calling. If that's you, I'm going to pray that, that you would find breakthrough, that you would find freedom in your different. That's my prayer. But maybe you're the second person and maybe you say, man, I have struggled for Ever. I've been angry forever. I've been depressed forever. I've been anxious forever. I've struggled. I've been a cheater forever. Two words. Two words. He asked. I'm going to pray that wherever you're at, car, treadmill, in the room, wherever, that you would ask. It's nothing crazy. He's just saying, Dad, I need you. I'm here. I'm in the back seat. I know you're driving, but I, real quick, financially, we're not going to make it. My marriage isn't going to make it. My kids aren't going to make it. They're in school. I don't know what they're doing. Or maybe you're the one in school and you just so happen to get this and you just need to stop and say, Dad, I'm sorry. I messed up. My prayer is that in your going different, in your doing different, and in your reaching different, that you would come to know and be okay with being weird, with being different, with standing out. Because I want you to live the life God created you to live. I just don't want to see you faking it anymore. I don't want to see you struggling anymore. And I know you don't want to see it. Two things. He asked. Tyler asked. And that's my prayer for you. God, thank you. Thank you that you created me different. You created me weird. You created me crazy. Thank you that you gave me the past you gave me. I'm not going to hide behind that anymore. I'm not going to run from it. I'm not going to push it off to the side. I'm going to embrace it, and I'm going to use the very thing you gave me to change this world, to bring you glory, to bring you honor. We got, I'm done faking it. I'm done smiling when I don't feel like smiling. God, I just want to be effective. I want people to see me and ask me what my story is. God, I am broken. I am hurting. I can't remember the last time I didn't stress over finances. I can't remember the last time that I actually loved my wife or my husband. I can't remember the last time I didn't worry about my kids. I don't remember the last time I wasn't drunk or high. God, help me. <laughs> Excuse me, Dad, I'm here. I need your help. 
I need you to come and cure me. I don't want to be carried anymore. I don't want to bank on people to not show up. I just want you, Jesus. God, I pray for anybody that's on the other side of the screen that, that are a part of the YouTube campus, God, that they would begin to discover who you called them to be. So that this time in five years, they would look at a photograph and say, that's me. That's me. And they'll remember everything you did in their lives. God, we love you. We thank you. We honor you. It's your name we pray and everybody said, amen.